Elon Musk seems to be all ready to bring his satellite internet services called Starlink to India. This after the telecom minister confirmed that India's satellite spectrum will be allocated administratively not through an auction, much to the disappointment of players like Reliance Jio. Now Musk has tweeted saying we will do our best to serve the people of India with Starlink. Starlink basically uses a constellation of satellites to deliver internet even to the most remote corners of the planet. Unlike a traditional broadband service, which relies on cables or wireless means to provide internet through underground infra, Starlink beams the internet down from space. The main goal of Starlink is to provide internet to places that are remote or not easily accessible or that don't have a good broadband connection. This makes it particularly helpful for rural areas or for places where setting up traditional internet infrastructure is difficult. There are traditional satellite services also that do currently exist, but these satellites are much further away from Earth, so their speed is slow and there's delay in the transmission of data. Starlink satellites, on the other hand, are much closer, so they can give faster internet speeds and much better connections. So essentially, you can have good internet anywhere on a deserted island, on a boat, or while soaring through the skies. Now, how can you access Starlink? Well, for people in areas where there are Starlink connections, you need to buy a special kit. And this includes a satellite dish, a Wi-Fi router, and a bunch of cables. The dish is small and portable, and it can connect directly to Starlink satellites to wherever you place it. Once you set it up, it starts getting signals from the satellite and it distributes it through the Wi-Fi router. In fact, you don't even need anyone to come and install it for you, unlike a traditional Wi-Fi router, which is a nice perk to have. Now, how much is the speed? Starlink offers internet speeds between 25 to 220 Mbps depending on your plan. This is comparable to many traditional broadband services and much faster than most other satellite internet providers. A big plus is that it offers unlimited data on most of its plans. But now comes the downside. It's very expensive. Starlink services are priced at a premium overseas. The cheapest monthly plan offered by Starlink starts at around $50, which is 4,200 rupees, as opposed to Airtel and Geofiber plans, which start at 4 to 500 rupees. So for rural consumers who would end up being Starlink's primary target, the prospect of having to pay so much may not really be appealing. But of course, in places which don't have good 4G or 5G connections, and there are a lot of such places in India, Starlink would be a good option to have if you can afford it. And so India, of course, provides a big opportunity for Starlink. But traditional telecom firms are not very happy about this, especially about the path that the government is planning to choose the administrative allegation path rather than an auction. Most of us know by now that something is happening between Elon Musk and Reliance and there's Airtel somewhere in the picture. But for those of you who are not completely clear on what the issue is all about, here's a quick recap. So basically, on 27th September, India's telecom regulator, that is TRAI, issued a consultation paper that suggested an administrative allocation of satellite broadband spectrum. In this, the government assigns airwaves to select applicants instead of an auction process which has been happening in India for mobile Wi-Fi, in which companies like Reliance and Airtel, they have been participating and spending money to get those particular bands. In fact, telecom service providers in India have paid up over 4.8 trillion rupees to buy terrestrial spectrum over the past decade. So Reliance Geo had a major issue with the prospect of administrative allocation because they say that these satellite services are complementary to traditional services. There's no way to differentiate which part of the country you get certain services in. So that's why they said that to maintain parity between the telecom operators, there should be an option instead. Basically, what insiders say is that administrative allocation would enable foreign companies like Starlink to compete with local companies more easily since they can offer voice and data services directly to mobile phones. And this could be a big threat for players like Reliance Jio and Airtel. However, the centre has said that the global standard administrative allocation and even in terms of engineering, satellite spectrum beyond 7 to 8 GHz is shared and hence it cannot be individually priced. 
basically satellite spectrum bands they can be reused by multiple operators so it cannot be exclusively divided into chunks unlike the terrestrial ones in fact countries like us mexico and brazil they try to have auctions for satellite spectrums but they found it difficult to implement however this will not come for free the tri will fix a cost for it and the particular operators will have to pay up that amount in order to use the satellite spectrum in india While Starlink has its challenges in India the price the regulations and other such things and it may take time before it actually comes in a service like this could help bridge part of India's digital divide and change the way that we use the internet hope you found this video informative for more such content keep watching me I don't think that's necessarily conflictual uh with uh, what we what has been passed by parliament and mandated in the telecom act uh so let me put a couple of points before all of you so first of all uh the telecom act of 2023 which was passed in december of last year has very clearly put this in schedule 1 uh which means that for satcom spectrum will be allocated administratively now that does not mean that spectrum does not come without a cost what that cost is and what the formula of that costing is going to be will not be decided by you or me it will be decided by trai and there is a paper that has already been circulated by trai and we have a regulatory authority for telecom and that regulatory authority of telecom has been empowered by the constitution to decide what that administrative pricing is going to be and i am very confident that they will come up with the best pricing that should be adopted provided that it's being given on an administrative manner one two satellite spectrum across the world is allocated administratively So India is not doing anything different from the rest of the world. Conversely, if you do, if you do decide to auction it, then you will be doing something which is different from the rest of the world. Thirdly, for those of us that understand a bit of engineering, and I don't profess to understand a whole. lot about engineering but satellite spectrum because it is a very high level of spectrum beyond 7 8 gigahertz is shared spectrum now if spectrum is shared then how can you price it individually so i think there are a number of issues that go into making that decision which is why globally all countries in the world have followed a certain model and india is doing pretty well.